My name's Chris Miller. My name is Paul Anderson. My name is Mark Boyd. Hello, my name is Derek Combs, and I listen to the Blue Army Podcast. My name is Maddie Robson, and you're listening to the Blue Army Podcast. Computer. Hey, so I haven't got any headphones because after after my computer decided to die, my headphones also decided that they were going to die. So if you guys can hear yourself as an echo, let me know and I'll adjust the sound accordingly. But I think we should be able to get away with it because I've experimented a little bit. But I might be like this when you guys are talking. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> just try it. I can hear an echo. Yeah. Yeah, no, not on my end. Awesome. I think we're going to get away with it, lads. I think we're going to be fine. I don't even know why I needed headphones all this time. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I think it, cool. it only echoes if like two people don't have headphones. Ah, so, okay. Because uh, it, it, it's it's just the sound coming from cycles sort of thing. If you don't have, if you have sound coming out of two computers and it goes back into the computers and it goes, it creates like an echo thing. Well, there we have it. And we're then cleaning fine. up some... Um... <laughs> <laughs> IT knowledge, flexing your IT skills, man. Nicely done, nicely done. But we're here now, we're here now. And um, I mean, before we get started, lads, I mean, technically football came home. We did talk about the, the England women's team in the final. The final was happening when we were recording the last podcast. And I mean, like, congratulations to the England women's team. I just wanted to sort of like kick things off with that kind of a sentiment. And now, gentlemen, let's get this episode kicked off properly. Let's get started. <laughs> Before I start this episode, I do have to say that this episode of the Blue Army Podcast is done in partnership with Backs Against the Wall. Great live music in small venues. More to tell later. Oh, Harris, how's it going? And welcome back to the Blue Army Podcast. This is, of course, episode 79. We're nearly 80, but we're not quite there. And there's two gentlemen that I couldn't imagine not being able to talk to on the precipice of my 80th, other than the Cumbrian Brain Trust. I'm talking about Liam Denwood and Will. Welcome back, gentlemen. Hello. How are we? Good. Hello. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. All good, all good. Wills, was I a bit loud for you then? Did you take your headphones off? No, no. <laughs> my headphones were just catching on a bit of my hair, so I had to adjust them. <laughs> I do have to be careful. I'm like, I've, I've sat in a slightly different position and I can see like my levels and stuff when I'm talking now. And I did hit the red there, so I'm going to be a bit more careful. <laughs> it's the opening. You're supposed to hit the red. All right, OK. We're supposed to hit the red. That's fine. One thing that definitely hits the red every single time as we kick off the Blue Army podcast is our favourite tradition, gentlemen. That means it's time for off course, the Blue Army podcast joke of the week. Is he having a laugh? I think he's trying to. It's, it's the Blue it's Army the podcast, podcast joke of the week. All right, boys, here we go. I'm worried about this one. Here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do penguins wear to keep sun out of their eyes? Don't know. What do penguins wear to keep the sun out of their eyes? Ice caps. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> One day we'll just be able to cruise straight into transfer news or injury news or something after a dead bomber like that. But yeah, we'll move on to transfer news as we are. And we've had two signings since the last time we spoke. Lads, both lads were involved. Well, not involved, but at least sort of uh, on the bench for the game against Colchester on Saturday. The first of which we'll talk about is the loan signing. It's a season-long loan from Derby County for 20-year-old striker Jack Stretton or Streeton. I'm sure we're going to find out how to say that properly one day. Um, he had a loan spell with Stockport County last season. It's for a striker. We've obviously moved a couple of lads out on loan, one of them being Sam Fishburne. Like, that's a striking option. So we're obviously looking to strengthen the team in that position. I thought we had enough strength in that position. Paul Simpson must know something about this kid. Like, for me, he must have an inside knowledge on this lad. He must really rate him higher than what he's already got at the team. Because otherwise, I don't see a point in bringing in a fourth choice striker lads I really don't I really don't I'd rather give that opposition opportunity to a youth lad Liam Denwood I'll kick off with you mate because I know your feelings on loans <laughs> how do you feel about the season long loan 
of young Mr. Jack Stratton. I think it's this probably wouldn't be happening if um, Toby Shaw Silver was um, completely fit, but because he's injured for quite a while, then I think I think it is just season long loan. He's he's got some good experience. He, he played well when he went out on loan last season, and, and so well that he was recalled pretty much like, well very very soon after he got sent out on loan uh, for for Derby. He scored a goal in the championship. It was a nice finish. I had a look at it when we signed him, but yeah, it's just is he going to get game time? It, what's what's going to happen with that? Because I feel like it's maybe just to strengthen the bench a little bit because Brennan Dickinson now going to be out for the season. Tobishaw Silva's injured. Um, so it's maybe just another one to pad the bench with, but I I think go out and he needs to go out and try his best. He obviously made his debut the other day against Colchester. I think it could be a nice little youth signing, and obviously Simo's ties with Derby County. He used to be there, and you know Derby fans really like Paul Simpson. You know I I, I know a Derby fan, and and when we appointed Paul Simpson, he said to me, he said, "Oh, you got a good one there." Said I bloody know, but <laughs> but yeah, he's coming from a place that Simo knows. Yeah, I wish him all the best. Yeah, I mean, Wills, what what are your feelings on loan signings, mate? I mean, like this one doesn't really seem to me that it's going to be there to improve the first team eleven, and therefore is a bit of a bit of a pointless move. Do you have a different view on it, Will? Do you think like strength in numbers, maybe? I don't know. Well, I mean, I kind of agree with a lot of what Liam said there. Um... In that, you know, um, Simo, you know, might have connections and might kind of like know him. And I think it was kind of like a lot of trust that we maybe put in Simo at the moment. Um, he did get on at the weekend. So, you know, maybe he hasn't been brought in to be back up. You know, maybe Simo feels that he's got something about him that he could kind of challenge for a starting place. We, the first two games, I feel we've maybe been a little bit wasteful. It seems like we've created decent chances across both. So maybe that's kind of evidence that there is kind of a, a chance for someone like Stratton to come in and become, you know, even a first team player. It, it, it's, it's a move for me, lads, that I'm not really expecting a lot from. So therefore, you know, I'm not going to put too much pressure on the lad's shoulders and if he comes off the bench and scores a goal and then plays in the Johnson's paint on Tuesday, starts and scores another goal, I'll probably be backing him to start on that next Saturday. So, um, it, it, when a young lad gets on a scoring streak for the first time in his career, it's a hell of a thing to have in your start and 11, in your team and obviously Simpson's looking for, I think, like a spark up front because there seems to be a lot of chances going through Dennis and unfortunately, like he's scored at least one a game so far but, the amount of chances that are going through Dennis, they just, you know, people were saying on the first game of the season that we should have maybe scored four or five. And I don't think they're wrong either, to be honest. There was a lot of opportunities and at least three of them were, were Dennis is more than capable of finishing them. Hopefully it's just a little bit of sort of like early season rust and he's going to shake that off and he's going to be able to start scoring twos and threes more regularly. But it'd be nice to see some of the other strikers getting more regular shots off and more regular just, just sort of getting amongst the six-yard box maybe. Um, that'd be nice to see. The other transfer gentleman that we made is a young man. And this one kind of excites me a little bit. A young man called Jaden Harris. He's come on a three-year contract and we've paid money for him from Aldershot town he's 22 years old he's a midfielder and he's came through the Fulham youth academy playing up until the under 23s level Paul Simpson said in interviews this week he really likes the way that Fulham do it down there uh, referring to obviously the way that they bring through and develop young talent I mean He's got the right frame for me. He looks like he's physically going to be good enough to be playing at this level pretty much instantaneously. It's very similar to um, Moxon. It uh, seems like a very, maybe more of a gamble than Moxon because you'd imagine with a three-year contract and some money being paid, he's probably being paid a little bit more money. So the pressure is going to be on Jaden to start performing. But lads, it means if you're going to pay money for somebody... And you're going to give him a three-year contract. You imagine he's going to be in your first team and it's going to be the kind of player Paul Simpson might try and build a squad around. And therefore, somebody's going to have to get shafted out of the starting eleven. Wills, who are you going to shaft? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we could have Guy Moxon-Harris. Um, 
Got... St. Gibson's been one of our best outlets yeah, like, the first two like... games, creating opportunities. Yeah. I mean, Mano Moxley's got... the one getting the assist, but Gibson seems to be creating a lot of chances. Yeah, you could have Guy Gibson Harris, yeah. or you could have um, Harris Gibson Moxon. But like, which of those, you know, if, if we're imagining that it's going to be one of those three configurations, I don't know, like, I suppose it depends what kind of player Harris is. And I'm not sure I know that. So, um, where does where does like an opportunity come for a Devitt or a Taylor Charters with that kind of a midfield free as well? I don't know. Yeah, it's getting <laughs> tricky. It's getting tricky. What do you think of the transfer itself? Will like does it excite you? Do you re- do you rate the player? Like, what do you think of the transfer itself? The fact that Simo rates him and that we've you know given him a three a three year contract and paid money for him excites me. Um. And even though I wasn't necessarily thinking, oh, we need more central midfielders, I thought the kind of, you know, the ones that we've got are done or, you know, looked good in the first so, couple of games already kind of thinking that Moxon's you know, going to be a really important player for us this season. So when I saw him as a central midfielder, I didn't necessarily think, oh, that's what we need. But again, if, if you show that faith in a player, perhaps it's kind of like, he's just a really good player and we have the chance to get him. So we were like, Go out and get him, Leo. How are you feeling about the transfer of Jaden Harrison? Uh, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I, I. I'm not sure whether the plan is to put him in at the first eleven this season or to do it next season because he's still very, very young. And we've got him on. I can't. Well, we've got him on a long term contract. I can't remember the last time we gave a three year contract to anyone. Like that's not even like a, an exaggeration. I actually yeah. can't name the last person that we gave a three year deal to, mm. and we've paid money for him. I saw that deal and I thought, am I reading this right? We've paid money for someone and give them a three-year deal. This isn't the Carlisle United that I know and love. Where's the where's the six-month deal that we usually give out <laughs> yeah. to these kind of players? On the pennies, but, on the peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone know kind of a, a ballpark figure? Has anything sort of like been trickled down yet? Not even, I don't. Uh, I, I, I doubt it'll be like massively too much, but... I, I I think it's a really good signing. I like him. He scored a lot in preseason against Crawley, and and obviously for the Fulham Youth Academy, it, it's churning out some real talent at the moment. You know they get they've got Harvey Elliott that just come through there, who Jaden Harris will have probably played with at that age level. Uh, that Carvalho that's just gone to Liverpool. I'm not saying Jaden Harris is anywhere near that level. Well, he might be. Who knows? But <laughs> but uh, but yeah, they've got a good youth system and. I'm, I'm more than happy to take it. Sonny Hilton, another example. You know, he'll, he'll have probably played with Jaden Harris uh, in the Fulham youth system, which I haven't really thought about. But yeah, and as well, uh, some of the highlights. He scored against Crawley in pre-season. I saw in like the ver- in like the first 30 seconds or some daft like that. Good young midfielder. It's one to be excited for. Yeah, I mean, on paper, it looks like it looks like an exciting move for Carlisle fans to get quite excited about. And like I said, for me, the physicality of the man. I think he's going to hit the ground running and I really hope he does. I really hope he does. And I think we do need a goal scoring midfield threat, you know, somebody that can get into double figures yeah. every season. Apparently this gentleman is a box to box midfielder, which is a phrase you don't hear quite as much anymore in football. Yeah. There's, you know, not the ball winning midfielder, the box to box, the running guy, the one who's sort yeah. of like a part of everything, but is just around it. I mean, Hopefully it means he's going to get into the opposition box and score goals. And hopefully it means he's going to, when he's in our box, he's not going to cause any kind of mayhem for our defence and get them all confused and out of line. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, it, it's yeah. an exciting transfer. It's a free uh, deal. It's something that we don't really get to talk a lot about here at Carlisle United. So, yeah, money paid and a free uh, deal. The last time we paid money was at Gibson last year. We paid a little bit of money for Jordan Gibson. Amount, yeah. I think that was rumoured to yeah. be 15000 yeah. in the end. Uh, one of those ones. We're not laughing at money. We're not laughing at money. Anyway, we'll move on, lads. It's the injury news. And there's obviously a few updates and then the big, big injury news at the end. So the updates are Jamie Devitt was fully recovered from his illness that did turn out to be COVID-19 in case anyone was being nosy and really wanted to know how ill he was. He's fully recovered from that and he will be back amongst things more regularly moving forward. Toby Show Silver is still recovering and expected back within the next five to six weeks. But of course, the big, big injury news. We did talk about Brennan Dickinson's injury last week here on the podcast, but he'd just gone for his scam and now he's returned from his scam and his season is over before it's even 
began. It's absolutely heartbreaking for any footballer for this to happen to. And I'm I am gutted for him. Like I was really hoping this season was going to be the season he kind of turned it round in Carlisle fans' eyes and and got to hit the ground running and sort of like I don't know if he was going to be in that midfield free or he was going to be a left sided option for for Armour and they were kind of working on on Brennan as more of a defensive left sided player and working on this defensive side of his game because he does have the feel like physicality to defend um i just don't know how how much of how good he is at knowing how to use his body weight necessarily but unfortunately it's an acl injury and that's going to need some reconstructive surgery that surgery is hopefully hopefully going to happen at some point next week and if things go really 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 well he might be back at the end of april but chances are they're not going to risk anything they're not going to they're not going to force him back if they really don't have to and we're probably not going to see him again this year i mean you hate to see it happen wills i mean but but for the sake of stirring the pot what, what were you kind of thinking this season was going to be for Brennan Dickinson? Do you think he was going to be a bench warmer? Do you think he was really going to be in that first team? Um, well, uh, not initially because he's been considered as backup to Jack Armour. But um, it's it's still kind of early and there's, there's still probably be a bit of jostling for position depending on how the opening games go. So given the fact that Simo showed faith in him by giving him the contract expen- extension, I would imagine that he would have figured in Simo's plans at some point, perhaps with a change of formation and to use him as a winger or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just gutting to see somebody go down with such a long-term injury. But uh, Liam, do you think this is going to affect the transfers maybe going into the next couple of weeks? Like, we might need a left footer, you know, to sort of like cover that position. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm not sure. Brennan Dickinson is. I'm not sure how big of a loss he's going to be because I don't really know what the plan was for him this season. You know, we could never see him play for Carlisle again. You know, it's a dreadful thing to say, but he's on a one-year deal and he could be out for this season. So we, you know, it's very difficult to consider him part of the club's plans going forward. Yeah. So I would maybe like to see an, another player come in to sort of replace what he would have been. Maybe that's what. Like I said, this Stretton is sort of thing. And I know that I know they're slightly different positions, but just just as like an extra an extra option off the bench, I mean, so that sort of thing. But um, so I I personally don't think Stretton would have happened if Dickinson wasn't uh, injured and Shaw Silver wasn't injured. But yeah, Simo said he still wants another one or two coming in, so it, it could affect it. We could get another player like him. Uh, but another thing, Brennan Dickinson. He's still going to be on wages. He's still going to be getting paid by the club, even if he is there. So the wages that we would use for another player if to, to replace him, we don't have them wages there because Brennan Dickinson is still going to be getting paid. And rightfully so, he signed the contract. But it, it's it's a it's a dreadful position to be in because these kind of injuries are, are awful for, for anyone. You know, he'll, he'll be there with Dickinson. It's what? Oh, sorry. It's not the first time he's missed, like, most of a season as well, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's yeah he went down for yeah. three or four months, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a disappointing one, but like, like I said, you know, it's murky waters. I don't know how much of a big part of the squad he would have really have been uh, this season. Don't want to discredit that though at all. I mean, obviously, we hope he gets recovered as soon as he possibly can, and um, yeah. It does. It's interesting that you brought up the money thing there, Liam, because like maybe it might end up being one of those ones where we just have to go and get like a couple of youth lads on a couple of like months and try a few people out because we don't have the money to pay for like a full professional. We might just have to take a risk on a couple of young lads from a couple of academies and eventually one of them might work out and that'll be the one we stick with until the end of the season. That seems to be the thing, the way these things go when it comes to covering injuries. You seem to get like an emergency loan of some kind. I don't know. I don't know. In other news, gentlemen and Liam, you've been chomping at the bit to talk about this, I imagine. We spoke about this a little <laughs> bit in the chat yesterday. Harry the Chicken Face McCurdy has decided to go and get himself sent off last week and therefore will not be playing Carlisle United this weekend. For Swindon, that's, that's what you're saying, Will? I think Liam is about to say something as well. Said, Liam. Yeah, that's slightly wrong. He's going to be out for the League Cup match, not not for the one against Carlisle. So he's going to be back for Saturday. He's going oh. to miss the League Cup game on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> that's playing that's, at Park on Saturday. That's taking yeah, a little bit doubt Park. from his wing. Well, that's <laughs> you guys are that. Oh, no, that's great. <laughs> a lot of people were confused. Why is that? Why is he out for the League Cup game? 
it's it, it's a domestic ban, so it's any any domestic competition. And because it's only two yellow cards, it's only a one game ban. So we'll be out for uh, the next domestic competition. You know, there's cases of them people trying trying to serve it in the like Papa John's Trophy, wasn't the last season? Yeah. <laughs> against sent off in the league, trying to serve the suspension in the Papa John's Trophy because it's still a domestic competition. Yeah. But from what I heard, he is going to be back with Carlo. All right, interesting, interesting. But apparently, he kind of. Um... I don't know, lost his shit a bit and decided to go to the referee's <laughs> changing room while the game was still being played, rifle through their personal belongings and spray their bags with shaving foam and the entirety of the room. Um, Swindon Town aren't very happy about this and there might be more disciplinary yeah. action to go forward. What are you saying, Wills? I don't know. I was about to say, if that's true, we probably would get a bigger ban. But I know, yeah, I heard that ban seen anything... To kind of like you know like actually in the media so i wasn't sure if it was true or not i'm not 100 sure either but liam seems to know something okay <laughs> it's it's very like allegedly but there is even without that i think that was maybe an exaggeration of what actually happened he had a bit of a spat with some um uh, no surprise home supporters aren't particularly happy with him at the minute <laughs> you know so um i think that's maybe where it's come from where you know making stuff up about him sort of thing from the home supporters because he's, he's upset another set of fans by the sound of it as he did at Carlisle as he did at Port Vale uh, but yeah that seems to be the, the story with that I think <laughs> so there we go we, we, we might very well see Harry mm. at Brunton Park on Saturday so get your booze ready <laughs> no because don't do that because he'll score a hat trick no, <laughs> yeah, what no, no, no. Give it all the don't, don't let that old legend. Last time it made him have a mint game, so we're going to risk it again this time. <laughs> oh, I think he's a bit of a legend. Go quiet, maybe that'll work. He's a bit yeah. of a legend at the minute, though, because he was the one that got Keith Millen sacked to get Paul Simpson to the club. <laughs> so if anything, I don't give him a hero's return. <laughs> oh, no, he'll be after, he'll be, because oh, that'll yeah. get under his skin more. He thrives off the hate. If we all just <laughs> yeah. cheer him, yeah. give him a pop yeah. out. Yeah. 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 Oh, Harry McCurdy. Yeah, exactly. Get on this paddock <laughs> now. You've got to cheer him down that tunnel. <laughs> and then just see Owen Moxon put a two-footed tackle on him. Absolute, absolute scenes. It'll be brilliant. It'll be oh, absolutely man. brilliant. Oh, I mean, I can't wait, mate. I'm looking forward to the game. I'm really looking forward to the game. But uh, in also other news, uh, Jared Bramfwaite made his PSV Eidenhoven debut and he kept a clean sheet. And his next game is possibly going to be against Monaco in the Champions League. And he might be making his Champions League debut. Now, Ooh. Liam, when you were on holiday, me and Wills discussed whether or not it was a better move for Jared to go to the Championship or to a top division of, say, a sixth, seventh tier league. You know what I mean? Like that, the way they rank the top yeah. leagues, yeah. you know, sort of yeah. like sixth, seventh kind of thing. I'd imagine the Holland League being around that area. Um it, it, I, we kind of agreed it was a better move, didn't we, Wills? I think in the end to go to yeah. to go to a foreign league and try something reason. different as an English player playing the top division. But uh, Liam, do you think this is a wise move for him? Is this much better than playing at Blackburn Rovers? I don't. Know, I don't know if it's much better. I think it is slightly better. I think the Eredivisie is a good, a good quality league, and I think it has improved in recent years. And it's worth noting that he's gone to like one of the top two clubs in that league as well. So he is going to be playing people like. Teams like Monaco in the Champions League, and if they even if they don't qualify for the Champions League, they'll play away in Europe in the Europa League. And if even if they don't qualify for that, like they did last season, it'll be that new shitty Europa Conference League thing. So it'll Mourinho still be playing likes European that, football. Right? Mourinho was, you know, like, <laughs> was very proud Mourinho's of his trophy medal. He got tired, didn't he? I don't know. He maybe does. He's, he's, he's the first Instagram, manager to win like, all three, isn't he? League, you author, and then whatever the other one is, like tattooed <laughs> on his arm. Yeah, he's won the three. He's won the three. <laughs> but it, it, it's it's maybe a very similar level to the championship, but it's worth noting as well that he has already sort of come, done the championship. He's already done it. So it's a different experience. He's going on to play with some slightly higher level players that maybe he will be playing with. <laughs> very generous saying there's high level players at Everton when they're doing as well as they are at the minute. But it's maybe a similar level to what they're, what kind of level of players he would be playing with. So I, I think it's a good move for him. And, and he's starting as well at PSV. So it, I think it's a very good move for him. 
I did, this is going to engineer him a move to, if, you know, if things go tits up for Everton, I wouldn't want to go back to Everton. You know, like if, if they're having a, another crap season next year, like I, I wouldn't want to go back to Everton. And if he has a good season at PSV, it literally yeah. opens the door to the rest of Europe because European sides are much more likely to sign English players from foreign leagues, not the Premier League for some reason. It's a weird little thing, but it's true. And I imagine that this is going to open up the rest of Europe to him. And he could very very easily become, you know, a, a Dortmund player or a, a Atletico Madrid player or, you know, some, something like that. I, I could totally imagine yeah. that kind of a move in his future. There was you know? interest from Man United in the summer for Jared Brantford. I remember that. I don't know if there's anything left in that, but I'd absolutely love him to be at Dortmund because Dortmund have got a, a history of developing young English talent, haven't they? With yeah. Jadon Sancho. So I'd absolutely love him to go over there, do something like that, come and play for England and get us shitloads of money in the process. I think that's Quality. his way into the England squad. I really do. I think his way into the England squad is, is Europe's top leagues and trying to play for the top four across Euro's mm-hmm. top leagues. And then maybe one day coming back to England for you all those multi million pound contracts, you know? Yeah, I mean, you get looked upon favourably as well if you've got experience playing outside of England because it's presumed that that'll make you better at international football than a player yeah. who's only been in the country, you know. And he can instantly start adding things like Champions League, you know, to his resume now, you know, and that, and that does come instead when it comes to making a move to different clubs and that's, it's great experiences for, for him to have. Um the last bit of other news, gentlemen, is Luis Alessandra has signed with South Shields. All the best to Louis Alessandra. Um, looking at the bench from last year, which Louis Alessandra seemed to be a little bit of a permanent fixture on for a while, and looking at the bench this year, lads, um, Wills, it's got so much better, hasn't it? Like, we've got the better options. Like, who's who, coming off the bench, like, on, on the weekend, you had players like Hilton and Stratton. And, I mean, the, the options are just great, aren't they? It, it, it's, it's fantastic to see this squad really adding some depth and really getting some development. Omari Patrick, another example of somebody that was on the bench this week. But what do you think about team harmony and team balance? Do you think some of those players on the bench aren't going to be happy being on the bench for too much longer? Well, with the loan easy to relevant. <laughs> so one of the good things about them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe their parent clubs won't be happy though. You don't want to burn the bridges. I mean, like, like, uh, I mean, this the, the bench is, has improved a lot, hasn't it? Under Simo, recruitment's been top notch. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, there's always kind of. The, I'm always a little bit wary of kind of like at the start of the season making the judgment that we've now got a better squad because you're comparing players that maybe you initially had high hopes for but then didn't perform to players who you've currently got high hopes for because, you know, so like I feel like it's better certainly in terms of attacking options. Um, It'll be a few games before we get to see all of those players have decent run out um at Toby Show Silver not for a little longer than that. But um I feel like the experience on the bench is better and just have to see how it how it pans out. No, I mean like is our Liam is our league been affected at all by the amount of substitutes that have happened in the Premier League? Are we still confined by that free? Um no we're we can have five as well now. I think, oh, we yeah, can have five it, now it, it's well. all the way okay. it's all the way down the leagues. Yeah, we can have five. And the number of players on the bench has gone up from I think six to seven as well, hasn't it? Yeah. So so we've got a larger bench now to maybe put like where Taylor Charters would have missed out last season. You put another player on the bench, more options coming off the bench. You know, you can if you really want, you can change half your team at half time now. You know, it, it it is gonna have a big impact on 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 this league. How do you feel about that, man? Do you think it's a good thing for uh, this lower down the league for that to be a thing? I'm not sh- It's difficult because it's always going to affect more or it's going to benefit more the teams with more money. You can afford to have more good players on the bench because you'll get a few teams like your Barras, your Harrogates, these players, these clubs that aren't don't have as much money. They'll have like what? Ele- a, a, a good start 11, maybe three good senior players on the bench and then you're having to put loads of youth players on the bench as well whereas like Crawley who have just been injected with loads of money they'll have a lot more senior players to put on and they can easily take advantage of that by having experienced fit legs on you can pretty much change half your team if you really want to so I think it, I, I like it and I like it because we've got a strong bench I wouldn't have liked it last season when we've got 
who did we even have off the bench last season? We had a very weak bench at times last season, but I, I, I like it a lot more this season because it because it benefits us more. Yeah, I mean, it was just a bit more bare bones last year. It was a lot more sort of like your Sam Fishburns and 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 like I said, there was only five, wasn't there last year? It was only five substitutes yeah. we had last year. So I mean, what five, they, looked, sorry, did, did, did the new rules change the amount of homegrown players you've got to have on your bench? Because I remember last season. Uh, Barrow were only naming six instead of seven substitutes because they didn't have enough homegrown players and I guess at least one of them or maybe at least two of them had to be homegrown so they weren't able to actually fill their bench because of that so I'm wondering if like if, if like that number has changed now for how many homegrown you've got to have uh, I don't I, 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 it the looks rules... like because we didn't have any on the bench no well that's the, the rules now are you have to have one youth uh, homegrown player in the traveling squad. They don't have to be on the bench or the lineups, but they need to travel down with the squad. That's the new rule that's come in with that, okay. which is pointless to me. But <laughs> yeah. on top of that, <laughs> because Owen Moxon was a member of our youth academy, yeah, ah. a long time, and he's from Carlisle, I think he counts as that for us. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too well. sure on that. Yeah, so but I, I think that's that's what it is with with the homegrown players, anyways. All right, nice. That'd be that nice bit of knowledge there, man. Right, let's get ready for Lone Watch. Get your binoculars out, boys, because we've got to have a long look across <laughs> the border. We're going to kick off with Max Kalisby at Annan. And then this weekend, there's nothing to report. So we'll move on to Sam Fishburne's lone move. And he came off the bench for about 10 to 12 minutes and... There's nothing to report, really. I mean, they lost 1-0 against Kidderminster. Unfortunately, Sam Fishburn couldn't turn things around. Annan's team, uh, Max Gillespie, Annan, uh, they won 2-1 against Stenhouse Moore. Ah, got through that one. And um, <laughs> Stephen Swindlehurst, Swinglehurst was the man who scored the goal. So at least there's a little bit of a, you know, what do you call it, nostalgic lift yeah. there. But Max not getting any <laughs> minutes at Annan, unfortunately, this weekend. And Sam not really getting much of a look in at Blythe either. Um, that's the loan report, lads. A little bit disappointing, wouldn't you say, Wills? Yeah. Um, I, mean, I guess we've been spoiled a little bit with loans in the past sort of couple of years. <laughs> you know, we've, in terms of like the youth players we've sent out, we've, you know, there's been some success with like charters and fishburn. So, you know, maybe we'll be just overdue sending some up, but it's, it's early in the season. So we don't necessarily know that these, you know, that they're just going to struggle. <laughs> Hopefully things will Annan get better. Be good, you know, yeah. Annan should be doing well in that league again. So. It looks like it, it looks like they put themselves a decent squad together yeah. there. And uh, I mean, Liam, it's a little bit disappointing for the lads not to pick up any, many minutes, isn't it? It is, but they've only just transferred there as well. It's worth keeping in mind that they're, they're both new signings and maybe they need to integrate them into the side a lot more, but it, uh, it, it'll take a bit more time. But it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the pair of them. Just give it a, just give. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens in another couple of weeks. That's when I think it starts becoming actually sort of relevant how much and how many games they're playing. But yeah, it is disappointing. And, and we've had brilliant success with loans in the past, like you said, with Taylor Charters and, um, and Sam Fishburne. You know, you're never going to get as good a segment as when Sam Fishburn was scoring two goals every week because that was absolutely brilliant. Like, yeah, 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 I know you did the Sam yeah, Fishburn man. watch. It was absolutely brilliant. It was but, the yeah. sound effect of everything. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, maybe we're just a bit spoilt from what happened last season and we're expecting a little bit too much at such an early stage. Obviously, we want those lads to pick up some more minutes and or just any minutes for Max. That would be nice, Peter. If you just, you know, just get him off the bench for a little bit. Uh, that would be nice. Um, we'll move on, gentlemen, to the match report. And we're reporting on Carlisle United's one all draw against Colchester. And as we always do to kick off the match report, I'll give you the Carlisle United starting lineup for the game. We had Thomas Holy in nets with Back, Barkley, Feeney, Mellish and Armour across the back line. Gibson, Guy, Moxon in the midfield with Dennis and Edmondson up front. Service resumed. Same formation, same team again. Uh, how do we feel about that, Liam? Yeah, I, I, I maybe would like to see Patrick start this one, but obviously there's the big deal with his kid being born, so maybe, maybe it just wasn't 
emotional like tight it wasn't emotionally awake enough for that you know <laughs> it'll have been pretty drained from all that but yeah I think it's it's a difficult headache for Paul Simpson because I feel like his plan was always Ryan Edmondson and Patrick up top but with Dennis having to come into the side to make way for Patrick being out he scored every game and he's, he's, <laughs> he's I almost feel like Paul Simpson would have really preferred it if it was Ryan Edmondson scoring every game because that was sort of the plan. But now <laughs> he's got up, this I headache. You, I told you Dennis is going to score all the goals. <laughs> because now he's got this headache where Dennis has come in completely against what his plan was and he's just scoring for fun and he thinks, well, I can't drop him. But I don't want to drop Edmondson because he's meant to be my, my, new, my new main man. So, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe Patrick will have to stay off on the bench for next week as well. But for the lineup today, he... Just don't change anyone in team. Well, Simple maybe, though. maybe, and I'll stir the pot with you, Wills, maybe yeah. we're going to be looking at the same formation that we got back-to-back promotions with and we get Patrick into the side and we end up going 4-3-3. What do you think of that? Um, it Still, because then we've got like um, that sort of like three midfielder where we've maybe got four midfielders that are going to that are going to kind of compete for that. Would you move Gibson maybe into the front three or is that redundant because you made it a front three so you could play Edmondson, Dennis and Patrick together? I think that's the luxury of Gibson, yeah. <laughs> do yeah, it that's quotable. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. mobile. Well, I reckon he could to be a half-decent left-back if he wanted to. But then would he just <laughs> drop down to the bench? No, I wouldn't drop him. Yeah, I wouldn't drop him. I wouldn't drop him. No, you keep. I mean, like the person that you'd end up dropping is unfortunately. I mean, going into next week, this is. Yeah. Then, yeah, I might. I might suggest this change. In yeah. fact, I'm going to suggest this change. I don't want to kill his confidence, but he is the third centre back, in my opinion, Ben Barkley. Um, yeah. So I would drop Barkley, and I would go four three three, and I would use the position in the defence and put Patrick up front, and have three up front, three in the midfield, and four at the back with Melish and Feeney. Am I staring the pot, Liam? You, you made some faces there. I'm not sure Ben Barkley's the weakest centre back. You know, I think it not? would probably have to be. Nah, I think he made a mistake uh, on against Colchester, but I think John Melly should probably be, have to be the one that that drops out of the side. And and I mean, as well, I, I don't. Like, think... Mellish and Feeney are very similar, like like vocally Mellish... on the pitch, physically on the pitch. Feeney's a better defender. Mellish frustrated me at times against Colchester. Because I absolutely love him because he just tries his hardest and runs like mad. But there was times when I would I was watching that game and I thought, oh, go on, go on, put cross in. I'm thinking, wait, why are you there? Why are you at left wing? We're a centre back. Is he just, is he, I think it was that. I think it was that on the side. That's, I don't recognise him. the ball. That's his job. He just goes wherever he wants. We can't all have the ball. Now let's just get the amongst it. No, but he's far too far forward. He needs to stick to his position to some degree. That's why we have three defenders. But he's the tracker like, backer. Like he's the one that chases the ball back in. Do you know what I mean? Like he's the one that's made in the tackle from behind. Like, we've already got four across the back, and as long as he gets back fast enough, we're all right. We're all right. Uh, I think there's I, a question of whether you'd put Melish in a back two. I'd put Melish in well, a back exactly, two with yeah, Feeney. You, you wouldn't take him in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather no. have Simi and Feeney, can but he, like that's not yeah. my option, is it? Yeah. It yeah, possibly. Le- he can play left back. Well, <laughs> he, used to, he used to play left back anyway. Well, somebody has to play every left position. back other than Jack. You know, he's, he's going to have to get a break eventually. <laughs> and as well with that formation, you want, you, I don't think you... Again, with that formation, when you suggested yeah. the 4-3-3 three, three, to maybe try and keep Dennis and Edmonds in the same team, I don't think you could play either of them on the wing. I think both of them would have to be central strikers. So I think even if you did stick change to a 4 3, three you'd have to get rid of one of them. Yeah, because be I think it's both of them. Gibson. Well, like when we had when we when we were playing the 4 3 3 with, with Simo, like Hawley, Bridges and Derek Holmes, none of those are wingers. Hawley had the quality. The game's changed. So. The game's changed. But the central stri- all three of those are central strikers. Yeah, but Hawley had the quality to play further away from goal. Um not so sure about the other two. They were probably more strikers, really, but I think Hawley could definitely kind of it, it could pick the ball up on the wing. There's a very clear game plan. Like if you're playing with like an Omari Patrick and two central yeah. strikers, the idea is to get the ball to Omari Patrick and then get it in the box with two strikers still in the box. You know that that that'd kind of be the game plan. So Dennis and Edmonton. 
Yeah, Dennis and Edmondson. I still don't think you could do that. Nah, nah, you wouldn't want to do that. I think, nah, because <laughs> again. Is it still the Mellish thing? Is... <laughs> it's not the Mellish thing. It's the wingers in the modern game are a lot more important than they were 15 years ago when that formation was working. I think you need to have two wider wingers in a 4 3 3. I don't think you could have Dennis on the wing. And Edmondson's too slow. I don't. I, well, both of them are too it slow to play on the wing. I think. The ball. I suppose like you can you can become unstuck because people will get onto your game plan quickly if they don't. But Patrick can play on either side, so you've got that luxury of he can float to, from wing to wing, and them two just stay in the middle. So if he's on the right hand side, you pass the ball down the right hand side. If he's on the left, he's on the left. You know, and then you have the But then you play. Just then you play with the front two. Is, is that just a four four two that you've described? Well, yeah, that's what that is. <laughs> 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 Well, kind of, kind of, but with more elevated. Like, more, more, so it's a four, a four, two, four. four. You're going four, two, four then. Four, two, four. I prefer. I prefer four, two, four. Yeah, I prefer four, two, four. But like, but now only two different uh, central two midfielder midfielders. positions. Two central midfielders. Oh, battle for that. <laughs> you got a uh, guy Moxon. Devitt. That would be a good battle. We've got a good squad for it. Uh, you're squad forgetting. For it. We lend ourselves to these. You're forgetting Harris. Like, if we need to try different things. What about Harris? What's that? What about Harris as well? Oh, there you go, Harris as well in that in that, mid, in that midfield, you know. <laughs> and also, but I reckon Harris could probably you know, get amongst it a bit further up the pitch as well. So I don't think he'd be shy. Um, there we have it, though. There we have it. I like staring at the pot. Different. <laughs> you know? I feel like we've had a good discussion out of that. That was good. That I feel, you know, I feel like I rattled the cage a bit there. That was all right. <laughs> uh, we'll get on with the match report and uh, the Carlisle game started a little bit poorly from Carlisle. There was an early opportunity from Freddie Sears, a player that I feel like I've heard his name for donkeys years. Um, Freddie Sears hits the post. And after that, Carlos started doing pretty well. You know, we, we started to turn things around a little bit. We uh, There was some good play between Gibson, Dennis and uh, Moxon and uh, Armour. And, you know, we, we got amongst it a few times. But unfortunately, it was in the 19th minute when Ben Barkley just... Is it a lapse in concentration, guys? I'm not sure exactly what it is. The ball, obviously, came in from Feeney. Barkley has quite a lot of time and just... just I can't think there's a bobble on that pitch. That pitch looks all right to me. So the ball, unfortunately, ends up with the attacker, who still has a lot to do, plays it centrally, and Shilvers, whatever he's called, kind of scrapes it low into Thomas Hoyley's bottom corner. And it was maybe Hoyley saw it late, but maybe it's a case of these teams are trying to hit the ball low against our goalkeeper. Like I feel like in this game, most of the shots from Colchester were deliberately low. Yeah. How do you yeah. feel about them? I mean, the, the, first of all, we'll, we'll, we'll kick off with you, Will, I think, this time. I think it's your turn, sorry. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about the mistake from Ben Barkley first? And how do you feel about perhaps teams starting to target Thomas Hoyley's weak spots? Um. Ah, uh, the mistake. He just, he just doesn't get contact on the ball, does he? He's just like, just too lackadaisical. Maybe he's kind of not spotted the danger. I don't think he's, he's seen got, the man coming in. At yeah, all. thinks he's got all the time and space in the world. Way too and, casual. Yeah, the sort of thing that he might do, and no one's around, and it doesn't quite look quite as bad. Mm. So, like, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if that is kind of like just a, a bit of a lack of awareness. Um, Holly and the goal and uh, team shooting low. And I guess if kind of like that's what we've kind of talked about before, like just physically being his weak point because he's so tall. Um, I guess you know, t- you know, teams are gonna are gonna coach to try and do that against taller goalkeepers. Against shorter goalkeepers, they'll coach to try and put it away from them. I guess so. It's maybe it's maybe a weakness that I don't know yet. We'll have to see how the season pans out. But it's maybe a weakness that's made up for by his other strengths and 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 low shots can be easy, it can be more easily blocked by a defender too so you know maybe we'd prefer it if teams restricted themselves to low shots because yeah, we can I feel get like bodies he had a in lot the way. of time to kind of see the ball as it was coming at him Liam yeah. how did this goal kind of make you feel about Thomas Tom I think it's always been my concern with him because I think that's the reason why there aren't like because he's the biggest goalkeeper in the football league, I found out this week, you know, and that's the problem with them being too tall. And it's been the problem 
that I, I've sort of had with him since he first joined. It's them low shots. I don't know if you saw, it was trending number one on YouTube. He did a video with Chris MD on YouTube, and it was like, uh, yeah, we yeah. took we took 100 shots against the world's tallest <laughs> goalkeeper. It was a nice title, and it was weird to see Thomas Holding number one on, on YouTube trending. Uh, but look, he even said on that video, he said, Chris asked him, should we be aiming for low shots? And he said, oh, yeah, definitely. Like, that, like, that's, definitely, <laughs> that's, that's that what he said. That's what he said. Before the Colchester match. <laughs> yes, yes, he did. <laughs> the video, I think he was still at Port Vale, wasn't he? Oh, so, right. Yeah. I think it was, it was, yeah, yeah, it was filmed while he was, I think, in the summer after after the Port Vale loan move sort yeah. of thing. The you second the video with John Carlos saying, since, but... He can't be going on YouTube saying, this, this is how to beat me. Here's my weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> he could have said, yeah, it went, yeah, he could have said, Oh no, I'm very good. Down low, I can just reach out with my foot and kick him, and then like, <laughs> and, and then they wouldn't take any, and he'd look better. <laughs> well, he's known for in his time at Ipswich, he was known for saving with his feet. Yeah, that's what, and and that's when a lot of Premier League clubs were looking at him for a while. I remember he was he was linked he was linked with Everton for a little bit, yeah, as as like a backup for Pickford, and I, I just don't think he can get down low easily easily enough, and it's something he needs to work on. Yeah. I, I remember I I used to do goalkeeping training and it, it's it's you know i'm a lot smaller than him but i i couldn't get down most of the time so yeah. I, don't, I don't know how he's getting down for for them sort of goals like, i thought he should have saved it some of that has been maybe been coached out of him at something then if, if he was quite good at, it at one point maybe maybe but it, it's, it's going to be an interesting one yeah. to see because if if we have a, a clean sheet next next week and then the season yeah. after that he plays well as well then it doesn't become an issue. But if he's continuously, it's like when Joe Hart went to uh, yeah. Torino, where he got, he was known for conceding goals on his like on his left hand side or something like yeah. that, wasn't he? If it becomes an issue like that, then it's going to be a real issue. But, yeah, yeah. And uh, how, how did the um, the mistake by Ben Barkley did that bother you? Do you feel like it's something that he's going to dwell on that might shock his confidence a little bit, or do you think it's something that's going to you know, he's going to have to brush himself off and he's going to make him focus and he's going to be a better defender because of it. Well, I was fuming at the time. I shouted at the telly. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's nothing too bad, I don't think. I think it was more... I, I don't think it was a lack of a concentration. I just don't think he made proper contact with the ball. I think that's, that was the big issue with that there. And it's some of that... I, look, every centre-back has mistakes. And, he, and apart from that, he looked solid. And he looked solid against uh, Crawley. Um I think it is is just not going to. If he doesn't dwell on it, it'll be fine. I think it's an issue that it's a mistake that centre backs make, and it, it, especially at this level, you're going to get them sort of mistakes out of centre backs. I, I wouldn't read too much into it. It's just unfortunate timing. Yeah, we can't we can't dwell on things too much. We're not gonna we're not gonna absolutely hound the man because we have a goal to talk about, gentlemen. So obviously, it was. Kind of just before the stroke of half time, around the 41st, 42nd minute, there was a corner for Carlisle United and Moxon tried to put the ball in. It was a poor corner, to be fair, but it was only cleared as far as Gibson, who, instead of shooting, passed it back to Moxon and he whipped in one hell of a cross on his right foot onto the head of Dennis, who, I mean, that header just screams experience to me. Um, it's the sort of header that he's probably scored a lot of during his career. He knows exactly where he needs to get that trajectory of that ball to get it into the back of the net. And it's 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 one of those poetry in motion headers, you know. Reminds me of that Morgan Feeney against Oldham header from, from last season. The ball just lingers in the air for the perfect amount of time before it hits the back of the net. Um, and Dennis is off to a flyer. Liam, Dennis is an absolute menace. Good girl though, <laughs> right? It was the kind of goal that we weren't scoring last season, and it's the kind of goal that I think we needed to work on a lot more. That sort of simple cross header goal, because we didn't score a lot of them last season. You mentioned the one that, that Morgan Feeney scored, but it was a very it was a very isolated goal, and it was from a free kick as well. It wasn't like a, a cross into the box sort of thing. I was I was chuffed a bit with that goal, and as well, it was a n- nice header from Dennis. It was an absolutely lovely header, and he's not a big big guy Dennis so it, it was nice to see him getting in the space and it, yeah it, it screamed experience to me that header you know he, he really looked every part of brilliant and the, the cross from Moxon was inch perfect you know it's it's been the same two people in both games assist Moxon goal Dennis 
I think Moxon maybe meant this one a bit more. It was it was a lot more glamorous of an assist than his last one because I think the last one just <laughs> smacked into the side of his head and went went to Dennis, didn't it? You know, they all they all count the same, but it was a nice, it was a lovely ball in. I think it was made by as good as the header was. It was one of them goals for me that where the cross made it, you know, the ball through really made the goal, and and it, it, I absolutely loved seeing it. It was a simple goal, and it was a good goal to score. Now, um, obviously, Carlisle went into the bar. Oh, sorry, Wills. I just literally fucking blurted over. Yeah, I mean, oh, well, what, what I'm struggling you... to think what I could say that Liam hasn't already said. That's um, kind of what I, I was thinking as well. I was like, yeah, yeah like, what I was else thinking, can you kind I'm going to say, say about like, the cross. Is, is there anything you'd like to add then... to that? Like, obviously, Moxon's been quite impressive, hasn't he? He looks like he's really stepping up and giving you uh, good performances. And he's got the quality to be amongst the pigeons, hasn't he? I must have mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to see he's got good crossing in his game. I like that because um, I, I didn't necessarily know that that was something that he did. Nice. There we go. That, that was Will's bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Will's. Um, <laughs> obviously, going into the second half, um, uh, we, we, it's a one all draw. Carl had a few more chances going forward. The more impressive, what I was impressed by in the second half was was the right hand side where Gibson and Back seemed to be linking up really well, and they had a couple of opportunities that they could make between them in the half. And towards the end of the game, there was a Jack Armour moment at the back post where I do like to see Jack Armour get in the box. But unfortunately, no goal on that occasion. I mean, Wills, the partnership growing between Gibson and Back is looking good. The partnership growing between Moxon and Dennis is looking good. Like, this, the click's happening all over the pitch, isn't it, mate? Um, what is it that leads to that spark? Are they just like best friends? Is it is it is it, is it team chemistry? Like like you know like what 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 are you seeing in their performances? You know, is it are they similar players? Like I don't get it. Yeah, I think it's like the, just the type of player. I don't think it's necessarily that it's players who are similar to each other, but it's like a certain type of player works with a certain type of player. So yeah, I think it's just kind of like just having the right players in the right positions something that we can give Simo credit for that is kind of like that kind of like enables partnerships like that to develop. I mean, it is the system, isn't it? Like it's definitely the system because if the manager's telling Finn back to be going forward, then when Gibson has the ball in that position, he knows where Finn back should be. And if both of them are listening to what the manager's saying, then they're going to link up well and they're going to start liking each other and playing with each other and playing in that system. They're going to really start enjoying it. Liam, why can't we fucking score, mate? <laughs> <laughs> that's how, that's how it's personal. It's it, it, I'm not up front for Carlisle, but uh, <laughs> I think Sorry, it is. <laughs> well, I mean, you say we can't score. We've scored in every game we've played so far, and there's only been two. But I think it is just an, a matter of um, Edmondson just needs to get his first goal. Shaw Silver needs to come back. Uh, Dennis has got the goals that you know you'd ask him to. You know, you want a game is a very good return for a League Two striker. Um, and then obviously you've got oh, what's it, Patrick? Patrick to come back and yeah. get into a goal scoring form. So I think the goals will come. They, they are there. Just keep creating the chances. Get Edmondson in form. Dennis is already scoring. Patrick will come back and score a few goals. Shaw sure, Silver will do the same. Whatever happens with this Stretton. I think it is just a matter of time before we start scoring lots of goals. I'm not as concerned about the lack of goal scoring and the math, like all the chances being missed, like what was happening last season, because we had a very similar uh, problem at the start of last season. I don't know if you remember Colchester, the draw we had with them last season, mm. the first day of the season. Shamal George had a really good game. It was under Chris Beach, where yeah. we, had, we had chances and we just couldn't score. And that was a consistent theme for the start of that season. And then we just fell off a cliff. But... Um, <laughs> as long as that doesn't happen this season but I think it is it will just take time I think because we as well you've got to think Edmondson new player hasn't played with his players before you know it's just going to take time and I think I think it will come is that is that the answer Wills like is everything going to be okay um yeah I mean you know yeah kind of like two games is about right maybe for a you know, if, if a striker is maybe a bit more streaky but can score a lot of goals, and that might be what Edmondson is, then you know it wouldn't be unusual for him to kind of like not really look like he's, you know, not really look like he's 
he's being a bit wasteful in the first couple of games of the season. Um, we don't know for sure if, if that's what we're waiting for. We've got kind of other strikers as well. Um, you know, Patrick is, is going to get a chance to play up there. So there's other places where goals might come from. So maybe kind of like a bit of a negative that we've been looked a bit wasteful in the first couple of games of the season, but we're a long way off having gone through, you know, having exhausted all our all our possibilities up front yet. That's true. It's a knock-on effect from having such a deep squad like we've been talking about pretty much throughout the podcast, isn't it? You know, we've got that those options to be able to find the key to hopefully get someone on a scoring streak. I mean, not saying Dennis isn't on a scoring streak. And yeah, you're both right. It is still very early in the season. And yeah, it's, on, it's probably only a matter of time. It is probably only a matter of time. If it keeps uh, it up, you'll score 46 goals. <laughs> well, Callum Guy's still got to get into double figures, like so. Yeah, I was wondering when you were going to remember that. Single figures, because you said that um, uh, you know, you know, you were telling us that uh, Harris was going to get double figures. So we've got Harris well, and Guy getting double figures from midfield. No, I, said, I said we need a midfielder <laughs> like Harris to get double figures. <laughs> that could be Guy. That could still be Callum Guy. It will not be Guy. <laughs> I mean, it is the uh, one first. Go on, go on, put something on the line. What will you do if Callum Guy gets into double figures? Uh, <laughs> run around Carlisle naked. Oh, oh don't say that, Liam. Well, it's what what it's what what I'll, I'll even go as far as saying, I will go as far as saying, yeah. I'll give you 20 quid if he scores free this season. <laughs> If he scores, because he can't, he can't score. <laughs> <laughs> watch watch him get a hat trick wall. in the next game. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's going to get free in it. Ah, it's good to have a running joke and something else that's a running tradition here is, of course, the Foxes feature man of the match. Wills, who's your Foxes feature man of the match? Um, well, since I only really saw the match from the highlights. Uh, I didn't even get to listen to it on radio because I was away. Um, I'll just give it to Dennis because he got the goal. Dennis, Dennis gets one down for the goal. And Liam, who are you going for? Um, Gibson. I think I think he was absolutely brilliant. All of our good play came through him. Um, and I saw a start as well today. He's got the most successful drib- dribbles in League Two this season. I know it's only very early in the season, but I think he, he, he's, he's, he has played well. He played well against Crawley, but I think he really stood out uh, against Colchester. Yeah, he, get, he gets my pick. Uh, I mean, mine was also Gibson, so there it is. I mean, Gibson just seemed like to be a part of everything, and he, he was he's, he's, he was the ball before the ball in for Moxon. He had the assist to the assist, if that is a thing in football. And yeah, his dribbles are impressive, and he seems to be linking up really well with Finn Back, who I really think that helps to cover up Finn Back's defensive, perhaps, frailties. But we'll see as the season goes on, you know. He's, I feel like he's good going forward. But anyway, Gibson is my Foxes feature man of the match. And uh, I think he's he's tallying them up now and takes an early lead. So good for him. And the segment is over. On to the next segment, gentlemen, the Swindon Town predictions. Now, I'm going to kick this one off because I've got, obviously, the result of last week in front of me. We've spoken about McCurdy. We've cleared that up. He will be playing. And... Um, that was the only point they've got so far this season. Swindon haven't got off to a great start and it's about time Harry McCurdy got to eat another shit sandwich and this time in the form <laughs> of a big blue Cumbrian shit sandwich. And I want to say that Carlisle are going to beat Swindon Town by two goals to one and that cunt is going to score the opening goal. Mm. Right. What are we saying, Liam? Um, Come back to me. Okay, it will. What have you got? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna be optimistic because Swindon haven't had the best start. Um, maybe Harry McCurdy won't play if this thing about him trashing the referee's room is true, which I guess it possibly isn't. But um, you know, he might, he might, he might pick up a longer <laughs> ban. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna be positive though and say we're gonna win one nil. 
The Carlisle fans aren't going to wind up Harry McCurdy. We're going to get on all forums and make sure everyone knows. <laughs> what, what we're going to do is we're going to clap him and cheer him and get under his skin that way by giving him <laughs> a respect. It's going to work. <laughs> 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 so what, what, what is your actual result? 1-0. 1-0. Liam, nice. your turn, buddy. Gonna say 1-1. One, one. I, 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 I like Swindon. I, well, I don't like Swindon. I like them as in I fancy them to do quite well this season. I predicted them to finish either second or third. I can't remember. And they're a good team. And as much as I hate the little prick, Harry McCurdy's a brilliant player as well, isn't he, on his day? Uh yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd back Edmondson to get the goal as well. Continue the unbeaten streak, but don't do it in like perfect style. That's what I think's going to happen. 1-1. One, one. All right, more points though, more points, more points. And uh, I mean, we're not doing too badly, lads. We're sitting ninth right now. If the season was to end tomorrow, I wouldn't be too disappointed. And uh, I wouldn't be too disappointed to end this podcast on a lovely little segment called On This Day with a little question at the end. So, On This Day... In August 2001, John Bugsy Cunningham, who played for Derry City in the League of Ireland and was first team manager at Lim's Vardy United, as at 2008, arrived from Dublin to take over as number two to newly appointed Roddy Collins, the highly respected coach, promised to mould the squad into a shape with a strict training regime now gentlemen my question is to you and i'll build up to this question if i could go for a pint with any ex carlisle united manager i'd be going for a pint with roddy collins i have to be absolutely honest with your lads i reckon he's got some cracking stories and he's got a lot of explaining to do um, so i'd love to have a crack with him over a couple of pints but my question to you gentlemen and wills you can kick this one off my friend is if you could go for a pint with any ex Carlisle United manager and ex Carlisle United player, so you get to go out with a pint with two lads. Yeah. Who are you going for a pint with? Um, well, <laughs> why do you always put us on the spot? You just <laughs> to do. Oh man, um, because I was gonna say Keith Curl, but then he's teetotal now, so it's probably not a good idea. He can have a um, pint of coke. Can have a pint of coke. Yeah. Keith Curl. Yeah, go with Keith Curl. Uh, Jabbo as a player, though. Definitely Jabbo. Jabbo and Keith Curl and Wills on the town. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a cracking night out. Liam, you've had a few seconds to think there. Who are you going for a pint with? Well, I've tried to get an interview with him for a few weeks now, so I'm going to say Michael Knighton. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, well, uh, Michael <laughs> <laughs> Just because I've been trying to get a, a, an interview with him for a few weeks now, so I, I love him for that. And it, who was that player that tried to sue him? Oh, God. oh, we talked about him last week, did we? Um... Yeah, I think so. I'll pick him as well, because I want to see them yeah. argue. I want to see them fight. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael Knighton and somebody that sued him <laughs> and then would have got up the town <laughs> scary part so who was your player then Liam my who, player like, that, oh, guy, no. that guy that was... oh no I mean sorry Liam Skelly who was your player Oh, it'd have to be Simon Hackney for me because you just know I love Simon Hackney. <laughs> He's such a lovely guy. I reckon he'd just buy all the pints and he'd, he'd just sort of like, you know, you'd have to like tease conversations out with him and he'd have cracking <laughs> stories, but you'd have to tease them out with him, you know. And Roddy would just be like, what? What are you saying? Hey, what are, what are you talking about? Hey, oh, that's my Irish accent. from Yorkshire. I do apologise for that. And on <laughs> that note... <laughs> It's absolutely rambling. Right, yes, as I mentioned at the start of the show, gentlemen, this episode of the Blue Army podcast is in partnership with Backs Against the Walls. Backs Against the Walls is a small music promotion company in Carlisle that sets up live music gigs in small venues with the hope to create a fantastic atmosphere. And they have an event just for you. Well, it's not just for you. I do apologise. I didn't mean to tease you like that. It's for everybody, as long as you can afford £5, basically. It's on the 17th of September and it's at the Black Box Music Institute. The band's featuring our Jiggy Beast, Mangy Mangy Moose returns for the first time in over a year and Bees in Blankets play their last ever gig. This will all be um, finalised when the night finishes with a DJ set from Strictly Good 
vibe. So get yourself on the guest list. Go to Open Mind in Carlisle and ask the lovely Renata behind the counter if you could get your name on the guest list. Give her a fiver and you'll be gam to a fantastic gig on the 17th of September. Liam and Wills, thank you so much for sitting through my little advert. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Blue Army podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you both. And I do hope you'll join me again very, very soon here on the Blue Army podcast. There's nothing really left for us to do apart from saying bye for now. Bye. Bye. (laughs) So, amazing blankets.